All right, East Texas, so excited for our next guest. I'm a big fan of gardening, so it's going to be fun to talk to Jay White, who's the owner and publisher of Texas Gardener Magazine. Jay, so excited to talk to you. How are you? I'm great, Amanda. How are you? I'm doing well. Okay, so you have a big event coming up at the Angelina County Extension Office, which we will get to that. But I think it would be great for you just to introduce yourself to the community, tell them who you are, and then maybe we'll tell them a little bit about the magazine as well. Awesome. So, like I say, my name is Jay White. My wife Sally and I own Texas Gardener Magazine. We're very proud of it. A lot of people may not be aware of this, but we've been around for 43 years. And so, um, we're working on the last issue of our 43rd year, and we're about to go into our 44th year. So, um, the magazine's been here a while, and I think the reason that our magazine has lasted is because we have the best working horticulturalists in the state that write for us, and so many of them are from East Texas. I I'm not kidding. We have great, great writers from East Texas. Many of y'all have heard from Greg Grant. You've heard of Dr. David Creech, you know, Keith Hansen. And so all of those people write for us. And I think that's why people keep buying us is because they can trust us to give them factual horticultural information year after year. Right, and um, and as we all know, in East Texas and in Texas, it's pretty hard to keep our plants alive in the summer. So if you're putting out a helpful information, that's why they keep coming back, because we need all the help we can get. So Yeah, I can tell you one thing that Sally and I are really passionate about is we're passionate about water conservation. And as we've seen over the last few years, these incredible hot, dry summers that we have, that's becoming much more important in our gardens is learning how to make our soil more water thrifty, how to capture rainwater and use it. Um, because we're getting more Texans than we're getting new lakes. <laughs> right, exactly. So I noticed on um, your social media page, and what is that social media page? Can we share that with everybody? So I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Both of them are at Texas Gardener Magazine. Okay, so Texas Gardener Magazine Instagram page always has these monthly tips. So we're kicking off June today, it's June 1st. So can you just start it off by sharing some of your June tips? Well, first of all, we have weekly tips. Oh, wow. So, yeah. we, yeah, we put out every Wednesday, we put out, uh, a, you know, an actionable tip. And then we try to do tips scattered throughout the week as well. And so, as we go into June right now, this is a, a cool time in the garden. A lot of the things that we're growing, it's harvest time. And then as harvest time comes up, you have to kind of think about what are you going to replace them with? You know, a good example are green beans. Green beans are about played out now. They're getting hot. They're getting Buggy. And so you want to consider, you know, what to put in that bed now. So whenever you pull out one of these spent, what I call early spring vegetable crops, you always want to work an inch to three inches of compost into your soil. And then you want to put heat hardy plants out. And so some of the best for the vegetable garden, which is what we're going to be talking about with the Angelina Master Gardeners right now, are southern peas. Love southern peas. I love purple hulls, plain old black eyed, crowder peas, zipper peas, zipper cream peas. They love the heat and um, they have African genetics so they come from a place where it's hot and dry and that's why they do so well for us here in Texas and always a great choice to transition into the summer garden. Yep, thanks for sharing those tips and so if someone who doesn't receive the magazine what else can they expect to what other information can they expect to gain besides these helpful tips? Well, like I say, we try to stay relevant. I know not everybody's a serious gardener, and so we will have um, articles that focus, you know, specifically on certain plants, plant families, vegetables, vegetable families, things like that. But we also try to do things that are kind of current interest. And um, like one thing that um, Dr. David Creech always does, he likes to talk about, you know, what are the best trees for Texas, especially trees in East Texas. He does a lot of research over there in Nacogdoches. And he will tell you, like, what are the best ornamental trees for your area? You know, what are the best large long-term tree investments? What do you look for when you buy them? So we're not just vegetable or flower information. We also do current interest stories as well. That's good to know. And so you have a big event coming up at the Angelina County Extension Office. And so could you give the community an idea of what they can expect to hear from you at that event? So love going, love going and visiting with those folks. We've been there before. Great, great group of people, and they have a noon speaking se uh, series. And so that's what we're going to be doing on June 18th. We're going to have, um, I'll call it a vegetable seminar, and this is where I'm going to talk specifically about you know the best 
heat-loving vegetables for Texas. And we'll cover, you know, some of the things that people know about okra and, and southern peas and all, but we're also going to talk about some things that you might not know, like New Zealand spinach or um, Malabar spinach. So... That sounds uh, really fun. I like learning about new vegetables and plants that I've never heard of, and I've not heard of those last two that you just mentioned. So are you in your garden right now? Can you show the community any of your garden? I am. Awesome. I am in my garden. Um, let's see how we can do this and keep it stable. Can I? <laughs> yep, you can turn it around. Can I flip the camera? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> It's always fun to see a, a master's garden live. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. So, I'm in. You know, I, I am a gardener. I, I will, I will admit, I am a serious gardener, and I have more gardens than I have time. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm in what we call our football garden, mm -hmm. and the football garden is a large oval-shaped lawn that is surrounded by a bunch of perennials. And one thing that I love about my gardens is that almost every plant that I have in my gardens, I got from somebody else. We call those pass-along plants. And so if we were to walk around the garden and I was to bore everybody um, to tears, I would show them each and every plant and tell them the story and the person that gave it to them because I really do love these pass-alongs. Yeah, and uh, I, I think that because you can think of that person too um, while that plant is growing. That's a good idea. So you just take cut a piece from someone else and then transplant it in your garden? You know, there's several different ways to do it. I'll tell you one thing that I truly love are garden bulbs. They're kind of the easiest because, you know, they're kind of like an onion. You can dig down in the ground, you pull out the big healthy bulb, take them home and put those bulbs in your garden. And many of these bulbs will grow for generations. I mean, my wife and I grow a daylily that we got from her grandmother. And we're not sure how long it's been alive, but it's been in her family for 75 to 100 years. And so we're, we're pretty proud of that plant. And we also have some begonias that we took cuttings of and rooted and put those out. And that came from the other grandmother on the other side of the family. And we know that those have been around for 50 to 75 years. So like I say, great memories always makes you think of the, the gardener that shared them with you. Yeah, that, that is um, great. That's a long time that those plants have been around. And I have some really fond memories from my childhood with my grandparents. I grew up in a rural uh, community, and that was the activity that my grandparents did on the weekend. They gardened, they cut their grass. That was my grandfather's favorite thing to do, actually, is just cut his grass on a Saturday morning and then just sit out there under the tree and admire his work. And so I loved sitting out there with him and um, as I've you know gotten older I've taken that with me and it seems like gardening for me has just been almost like a therapeutic and it's just a way to process your thoughts and you know just that sometimes there's happy tears sometimes there's sad tears in your garden but um, the garden is just like a I have a heartfelt connection uh, with my garden and planting and so what is it um, that you love about it Jay? Well, there are so many things that I love about gardening, but it is definitely therapeutic. Um, I'm retired from MD Anderson Cancer Center. I, I retired from there after 22 years, and then we bought the magazine. And I think it's just fascinating that MD Anderson, which is the premier cancer institute really in the nation, they understand the value of plants and gardening. And so they made a point to put in rose gardens that their patients could go to while they were recovering. And in the patient recovery area, all of the pictures that line the halls were pictures of nature and plants and trees and all of that, because science has proven just being outside, just being exposed at nature is good for not only your mental health, but your physical health. And so like you say, if you're having a bad day, there's some evidence that just putting your hand in the soil releases serotonin. Mm -hmm. And so I like to tell people, if you got problems, go out to the garden and you'll work them out. Right, <laughs> yep, I, I agree with that. So Jay, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you wanna share about the upcoming event on June 18th? No, I know that it's open to the public. They always have such a great turnout there. Come out and see us. Uh, like I say, we'll be there. We'll have the magazine. We'll have some products if you're interested in them. And if you want to subscribe, I mean, be sure to head over to our website at texasgardener.com. We have several print subscriptions. We have digital subscriptions, which are on sale right now. So um, this is a good time to get that. And so anyway, just come see us. 
If you're new to gardening, get out there, get your hands dirty, give it a try and plant happiness. Right. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Plant happiness. All right. You heard it, East Texas. If you want some tips on how to plant happiness, please go to the Angelina County Extension Office on June 18th to hear Jay share advice on planting vegetables and a whole lot more. Jay, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, East Texas, that was Jay White, owner and publisher of Texas Gardener Magazine, and he's going to be speaking at the Master Gardener's noon meeting on June 18th at the Angelina County Extension Office. If you want more information on events that they host, the Angelina County Extension Office has way more events than just the gardening events, but the Master Gardener's you can go to angelina.agrilife, and that's A-G-R-I-L-I-F-E dot org forward slash master hyphen gardeners.